I'll be talking about search algorithms. This is a, a relatively advanced topic, but um, the basics of it are understandable. As usual, I'll be posting these slides and the accompanying video to my Google Classroom, and you should also be able to find uh, the video on the Academic YouTube channel. So today I'll be talking about search algorithms. So uh, I'll give a few simple definitions first, just in case you don't know what search and sorting mean necessarily in uh, the context of Java per se. So searching allows us to find an item uh, within an array of elements. This could be an array of characters in a string, for example, as I mentioned earlier, or an array of integers, double um, booleans, or anything like that, and allows us to find a specific element within this array. Uh, either if it exists or not, or the accompanying index of the uh, element within the array. And sorting, a basic definition of it is basically um, sorting the data. It's pretty self-explanatory. It allows us to put the data in order, either numerically or alphabetically. Uh, for example, in integers, you could sort it uh, from least to greatest or greatest to least, something like that. So for example, uh, this is an array. And if we want to find some element, for example, 31 within it, we could search for it. And uh, the index of 31 in this context would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, would be 5. So we could find the index of this element within an array. So uh, when we talk about searching, the most uh, self-explanatory way of searching uh, and the easiest algorithm to implement would be what we call the linear search. And this is very self-explanatory. Basically, uh, we go through every element in order until we find the desired element. But there are some problems with this. First, it is very slow and inefficient. And additionally, oftentimes it is impossible if we have a very large data set. Uh, what I mean by this is if we have an array with say 2000 elements in it, we cannot go one by one through every single element to check to see if it is matching with the uh, our desired element that we are searching. And so we have to find other search algorithms uh, to make the process of searching more efficient. But uh, let's see if I can demonstrate what a linear search does real quick. So basically I check to see if, uh, for my example, I'm searching for 33. Uh, first I check to see if 10 is equal to 33. Uh, no, so I cross this out. Then I move on to 14. Is 14 equal to 33? Obviously not. Then I go on to 19. Is 19 equal to 33? No. Then so on. until I get to 33. It's 33 equal to 33. The computer recognizes that it is. So at this point we are done and we return the position 33 here, which is position five based on the index. And so we have found uh, in computer terms, uh, the position of 33 within this array. But as we can see, we have to go through every single one of these elements in front of 33 to find it, and this can be very inefficient. So, now that we understand why this process could be inefficient, we want to find a more uh, efficient method of searching for elements within an array. However, before I go on to that, are there any questions? Um, you can Type any questions you have to me in the chat box.
Okay, so I guess there aren't any questions, uh, which is not surprising, I guess. Searching and especially linear searching is a pretty uh, simple concept, but so I'll move on. Uh, next, I'll be talking about what we call a binary search, which is a much more efficient searching algorithm. So uh, the binary word search algorithm looks something like this. If we are given a sorted array of elements, for example, in an array of integers, we could sort it numerically from least to greatest. First, the binary search looks for the middle element within the array. It then, com it then compares the desired element to this middle element. At this, at this point, we have either three uh, things that could happen. Either the middle element has the exact same value as what is correct. At this point, uh, we have found the location of our desired element, so the search is considered completed. Otherwise, the correct value is either greater than or less than than the middle element. Um, because the array is sorted, if it is greater than, then everything else underneath the middle element can be ignored because uh, they are obviously less than the middle element. So we only have to search for the uh, correct value in the second half of the array. And alternatively, if the desired element is less than the middle element, we only have to search within the uh, bottom half, bottom portion of the array. Uh, I'll draw it real quick to see, to make it um, more clear what I'm saying, I guess. So given if I have some array of like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven elements, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We first look for the middle, okay. Um, for example, let's say we're trying to find five. We first search for the middle element, which in this scenario is four. Is four equal to five? No. Therefore, uh, we must compare our desired element to four. Five is greater than four. Because five is greater than four, everything underneath four can be excluded because if five is greater than four, it must be greater than anything that is less than four. So therefore, we can get rid of this entire uh, portion of our original uh, array we are searching and only search through this array. And then we repeat the process. The middle element of this portion of the array is six. Is five equal to six? No, uh, five is less than six. So therefore we must search, um, we can get rid of these two elements and we are only left with one element to search. And if we compare it to five, we get that this is indeed equal to five. So we have found the position of five using the binary search algorithm. So does that make sense conceptually? Um, sorry for the bad handwriting, I guess. It's kind of hard to write using a mouse on uh, a whiteboard or computer screen. So any questions regarding the algorithmic properties of the binary search or like the basic thought process behind how it works. I mean, it's not that complicated. Basically, it relies on the fact that if we have a sorted array, uh, we can either get rid of the top half or the bottom half of the array because an element greater than the middle element will be greater than everything uh, to the left of the middle element. And if it's less than it, it is less than anything to the right of the sorted middle element. Okay, uh, no questions. At least I didn't see any. So I guess I'll move on. Uh, clear my drawings. All right. So uh, I'll give an example real quick. So this works. This is pretty much going to be a longer example of what I showed earlier, but. Uh, say we find, we are trying to find the index of the value 22. Well, 
we know in an array, in an array the uh, index values uh, start from zero to the array length minus one. So that would be zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And each of these index values corresponds to an element. In order for uh, this array, uh, for this binary search process to work, this array has to be sorted. And we can see that this is sorted from least to greatest. So given these conditions, we can find the appropriate uh, index that is corresponding to the value of 22. And I already did this before, but uh, I'll do it again real quick. The middle value uh, can be calculated by doing the sum of the first and the last element divided by two. In this scenario, 14 plus zero over two is seven. This is uh, the element we first look at. We can compare 22 to this element eight. Is 22, since 22 is greater than eight, we can cross out everything underneath eight, including eight itself. Then we must find the middle value of this set of elements, which is uh, 11. So we compare 22 to 29. Since 22 is less than 29, we can cross out everything here. Since it must be less than 31, 37, or 56 as well. And we can finally compare it to the middle element within what we haven't crossed out yet, nine, which is 14. And since 22 is greater than 14, we can cross this out. And we are left that 10, the index 10 corresponds to element 22. So the index of the value 22 in this scenario would be 10. So it's basically the same thing as what I showed earlier, but with a different array of elements. And uh, since this binary search concept is a bit new, it bears repeating. So I just uh, did another example real quick. So any questions? Okay. So now I'll talk about the algorithm behind the binary search. Uh, I did, I wrote this uh, binary search algorithm prior to class uh, in order to save some time, I guess, but it looks something like this. Uh, I made the algorithm a separate function, uh, a separate method, I guess you could say. And what it does, given a array of elements that is sorted and a value to look for, it returns the position of uh, the value within the array. So the algorithm works something like this. We have that the first element uh, has an index of zero always because arrays uh, start with the index zero. The last element has the index of the array length minus one. This is because since it starts with zero, it goes from zero to array length minus one instead of from one to array length. Uh, we've defined a middle value uh, to using the future. And we also define an index value to return. This is ultimately what we are looking for. And we set it to negative one at the beginning because if we cannot find it and we do not end up changing it, uh, it will remain negative one. And this shows that the element that we are searching for does not exist within the array list. Um, please do not spam messages to me. Um, we also set up a boolean flag equals to false and what this uh, flag allows us to do is to check to see if we have found the element yes yet because for example if we find uh, if the middle element is on uh, the value we're looking for we do not have to do any of the steps after knee um, after it because 
uh, we already found the element and we have completed our goal. So first, uh, we use a while loop. This is because until we have found the element, we must, con uh, we must com continue searching for it, or until uh, we have gone through every single index value within the array. At this point, uh, we realize that the element is not within the array, and we can stop searching for it. Uh, like I demonstrated earlier, first, uh, we calculate the middle value uh, so that we can compare our desired value to it. This is a pretty simple algorithm. It's just a mean uh, first and last, which is first plus last over two. So given this middle value that we have assigned, we first check to see if what we are looking for is equal to the middle value. Um, if this is true, we have found the value and we can set flag to true so that we can exit this while loop, which only runs while flag is false. Additionally, we set index equal to middle and we can return this index at the end. However, if um, we have not found it yet, we must continue searching for it. At this point, if it is greater than, uh, we can eliminate every single value less than the middle so, I mean, uh, greater than the middle, because if value is less than middle, it is less than everything that is to the right of it, or greater than it. So therefore, we can restrict the bounds of our searching algorithm to the index middle minus one, which means one element to the left of the middle value. And otherwise, it must be uh, less than our value in which we do uh, the symmetrical um, uh, symmetrical like change to like our index bounds. We change first to middle plus one so that we get rid of everything underneath middle, including middle itself. Notice that this while loop is what we call it, a recursive function, sort of. Uh, we have an exit criteria and otherwise it continues running until uh, we find what is desired or the bounds are exited. Uh, this is the condition for uh, the binary search failing because if first is not less than equal to last, uh, that means that uh, we cannot calculate a middle value and therefore the process for uh, doing binary search fails. So does anyone have any questions? Um, yeah, I will be posting uh, this algorithm on the Google Slides. It is already there. So uh, if you want to review it, and the code for how this algorithm works, uh, feel free to look there for it. And this part with the code at the top is just a simple to test to see that our function uh, returns the index of a element within the sorted array. For example, uh, as earlier, if we search for the element 22, it has an index of 10, which is returned here uh, as shown. So you can see that um, it's working correctly, basically. Uh, I'll illustrate a few more things real quick. So, uh, Running through the algorithm one time, basically the computer checks to see that this is the first element, which has an index of zero. 
This is the last element, which has, which has an index of array length, which is 15. There are 15 elements here, minus 1, which is 14. It calculates the middle value by taking the average of these two, which is 7. So this is our middle value. It compares it to 22. Uh, this is less than 22. At this point, we realize that anything uh, with an index of less than 7, we do not have to check anymore. So therefore, we can change the value of first to 8, which is coincidentally the middle index plus 1. So we can see how that works better. Uh, we can see that it is indeed middle plus 1. We change the first value to middle plus 1. So does anyone have any questions? Okay, so no more questions. So one of the conditions that I emphasized earlier was that the array of elements has to be sorted. So that uh, leaves us with another question, which is how do we sort an array? Well, this is a very complicated uh, topic. In Java, uh, there are many algorithms to, that allow us to sort an array. However, uh, luckily for us, uh, the default Java API contains the default sort function, which utilizes a method called quicksort. Uh, and how do we use this uh, default sort function? is we type arrays dot sort and then uh, the name of the array. From our previous example, uh, we named it um, numlist, the array numlist here. So we want to sort, uh, sort numlist before we apply the binary search algorithm to it. We would just do arrays dot sort numlist with the semicolon. This function sorts the elements within an array numlist, um, changing all of the indexes of indices of the elements within it, but otherwise retaining its original name and elements within it. Um, I would like to mention that there are indeed more efficient sorting algorithms. Um, for example, I don't know. Uh, let's see. A few, a few off the top of my head would be like merge sort, insertion sort, uh, quick sort, bubble sort. All of these have their appropriate uh, benefits and disadvantages. Uh, however, uh, the default Java function uses quick sorts. Sort functions, Java, not JavaScript. See, we can see that there are a list of sorting algorithms here. Selection sort, bubble sort, recursive bubble sort. There's a lot of ways to sort an element within an array. However, um, the default method that Java utilizes is what we call quick sort. So I just wanted to mention that there are lots of benefits and disadvantages to different sorting algorithms. However, uh, for the sake of simplicity and for an introductory level course, I will uh, most of the time you guys will just be using the default Java sort function, which is called upon like this. Um, Arrays.sort numlist with sort, the elements within an array with the name numlist. So what are the implications 
of our search and sorting algorithms. So um, there are two major implications. If we want to determine the existence of an element within an array, we can search for it. Uh, notice that in our algorithm before, if we do not find the element within the array, we return the value of negative one. So if we see that the position is equal to negative one from say a binary search algorithm, we can determine that the element does not exist within an array. Alternatively, another thing we can do with a search and sort function is if we want to determine the index of an element within an array, uh, for example, as we determined earlier, the index of uh, 22 was 10. We can use a binary search algorithm for it. However, the indices would only match uh, the, uh, the sorted array. So a way to remedy this and to, is to map the sorted array function to the unsorted array uh, by mapping each of the original indexes to the sorted index. index. And then after using a binary search to find the element's new position, we can map uh, that value to its original position. This is a um, complicated topic um, called mapping, which I won't go over in class, but know that it is definitely possible to determine the index of the element within an original unsorted array. So, these are the two major implications of our search and sort algorithms. Any questions? All right. If not, I'll, search, I'll show you, um, I'll demonstrate, I guess, um, the efficiency uh, of a binary search algorithm uh, for a quick program, I guess. A quick test for understanding would be um, the following question. Why would an unsorted array not allow us to use binary search, uh, not allow us to use the binary search algorithm. The reason would be because that the binary search algorithm relies on the fact that any elements with an index of less than the middle element or less than it. And if it is unsorted, we cannot make this assumption and therefore it would be uh, incorrect to get rid of every element underneath the middle index. Okay, so uh, let's create some function uh, that sorts, for example, uh, people's grades in a class. Let's say, so uh, first we allow the user to input some number of grades, I guess. Uh, we have to use a scanner class for this, I guess. And then um, So that compile nicely. Uh,
Oh, we have to create an array with um, this length, I guess. Um, So this would allow us to uh, basically fill in an array by the name of grades with user inputs of grades, I guess. And then we apply a sort function. important. Okay, so it compiled. Hopefully it works. Uh, for the sake of simplicity, let's type in like what, five scores? Uh, I will type them not in order. However, the um, program should output them in order. Uh, 13. See, as we typed it in, we typed it in different orders, so the indexes of these scores uh, would be different. However, once we sort it, we realize that um, the grades are correctly sorted from least to greatest. So that demonstrates how to use the sort function that Java gives us on MacLay. And I guess the important thing that I mentioned, forgot to mention earlier would be that we would have to import uh, this util called arrays and basically allows us to apply the sort function. So we write import java.util.arrays that we call in before any of our program. So at this point, we have a sorted function, right? Uh, I'll demonstrate to you quickly how the linear search function would work. Uh, say we want to search for some element within the array. Uh, I don't know, maybe for the purpose of finding which how high the score is. Uh, int index. We allow the user to search for some index value, I guess.
So this is how a search function would work. It's a simple for loop going through every element of the array from zero to uh, less than uh, to less than the length, and it compares each of the elements uh, to the desired index, and then it changes the index to match that of the position of the desired index. So uh, let's test it real quick. This should work, by the way. And this demonstrates how it's simple. Uh, a linear search algorithm really is. Um, that's pretty much all I have today. Hopefully I can get it to run before class ends. Uh, Wait.